A warm welcome to your Barbados Today evening news update for Thursday, July 29. Government's ongoing recovery efforts following the passage of Hurricane Elsa earlier this month receives a major boost. The Caribbean Catastrophe Risk Insurance Facility today announced that it has made two payouts totaling 2.5 million US dollars to government under the island's tropical cyclone and excess rainfall parametric insurance facilities. Government is still assessing losses from the Category 1 storm, which damaged over 2,000 homes. To date, Barbados has received seven payouts from the facility, totaling $21.8 million. US dollars. Any ease in taxes to provide citizens and businesses a relief from rising costs will require a careful balancing act on the part of government. This assessment from Central Bank Governor Cleveston Haynes, who indicated that while it is necessary that individuals and businesses are not burdened to the point, they cannot cope, it was equally important that government continue to collect revenues. Haynes was responding to questions from journalists on Wednesday as he presented his half-year economic review and outlook. It really comes down for the Minister of Finance to, to make a determination as to where that balance should be between providing relief and being able to get uh, the revenue which is needed to finance education, health, transportation, etc. On the heels of the Central Bank Economic Report, President of the Democratic Labour Party, Verla de Pisa, is calling on Prime Minister Mia Motley to present a budget as a matter of urgency to ease the burdens of Barbadians. The country needs a clear policy plan. This would provide direction for a planned recovery as opposed to the current perception of this government holding its breath while waiting for tourism to take a breath. To be clear, the Democratic Labour Party calls on the Motley administration to present a budget to the nation as a matter of urgency. Show the people you care with a clear plan that is not just an empty slogan. Most to improve the ease of doing business are afoot. In fact, clients will soon find it easier to incorporate a business or register a company with the Corporate and Affairs and Intellectual Property Office, KAIPO. The department is all set to roll out its new corporate digital registry in the coming weeks. And today, as staff were being trained, acting registrar Timitra Rochester updated the media on the digitization project. Now we are in phase one, which will encompass the registration of business names and the incorporation of companies. Um, that phase is expected to be completed um, towards the end of August, so we will be able to go live once that phase is complete. So the training we are doing now is actually at the kind of at the the end of the development process. So the programming has been done, the system has been developed, and we have our staff both training and testing the system um, to see how well it holds up and to. to basically make sure it's fit for purpose and we can use it and we go through and make sure it covers everything. Rochester gave the assurance that the new corporate digital registry will dramatically improve the time it takes to register a business and conduct other affairs with Kaipo. All of our um, manual processes will now be moved into a digital format. So it means that our um, filings, applications for business names, incorporation of companies, etc. Uh, persons will be able to complete those processes from filing up to the issuance of certificate electronically without leaving the comfort of their homes or offices. And now for the latest COVID-19 update. Positive cases appear to be on the decline. One person, a male, tested positive for the virus from the 771 tests conducted by the Best de Santos Public Health Laboratory. There are currently 136 people in isolation. To date, 4,365 confirmed cases of the virus have been recorded and there have been 48 deaths. The Public Health Lab has carried out 215,030 tests since February last year. Under the National Vaccination Program, 99,299 people have received first doses of the vaccines. Additionally, 74,877 second doses have been administered. This total represents 27.6% of the population. There's regional and international news after this short break.
The Barbados Today, news you can trust. The regional news, the recent announcement by Prime Minister Mayor Motley that Barbados is proceeding with plans to become a parliamentary republic by November 30 has stirred much debate in Jamaica about the removal of the Queen as that country's head of state. From Kingston, TVJ's Sandy Williams reports. The latest comments from the Barbados Prime Minister has revived calls for Jamaica to follow suit. Social historian at the University of the West Indies, Mona, Professor Vereen Shepherd, does not believe that Jamaica's education system has prepared the population sufficiently to understand the role of the British royal family in African enslavement. I'm not sure the level of education about the monarchy and the royal family is as it should be in Jamaica. A lot of people see the current Queen of England Elizabeth II. That's a nice old lady, and they feel, you know, she hasn't done anything to Jamaica. But that's because of lack of knowledge of how the royal family benefited from slavery and colonialism, and how there has been an intergenerational transmission of wealth across, you know, not just the royal family, but others in the UK. Therefore, she says public education is needed before Jamaica can take the step to remove the Queen as head of state. There should be public education on all the relevant issues. There should be public education about what the association with the royal family has done to Jamaica historically. From the time of conquest, their support of the traders in enslaved people, from their benefits of the wealth of the Caribbean, there should be education on that. This would mean that the Ministry of Education will have to take history education seriously and ensure that it's mandatory in all our schools. On the international front, as more countries move to mandate vaccination, Canadians have also been weighing in. And as we hear in this report from Global News, there are mixed views on the matter. Un peu contre mon gré. This physical therapist says she'll be vaccinated against her will to keep her job. Mixed reaction in France to the president's announcement all healthcare workers need the jab. When it comes to high risk patient groups, especially when you think about uh, you know long term care, when you think about our oncology and, and, and immunosuppressed populations, I think it's, it's possible the benefit outweighs the downside. In Canada, COVID case numbers are lower and vaccination rates higher, but the push is still on. We expect every care worker to be vaccinated. And if it's not the case, there will be consequences for that. Only a few provinces have mandated vaccines and only sort of. Quebec has the broadest rules. Since April, healthcare workers who interact with patients have had to show proof of vaccination or be subject to testing three times a week. Ontario and BC target long-term care staff. In Ontario, they must show proof of vaccination, provide a medical reason as to why they can't, or take part in an educational program about the benefits. In BC, new rules take effect next week, requiring unvaccinated workers to wear a mask and take regular rapid tests. We're going to continue to use the education model. Uh, there is choice uh, when it comes to who uh, gets vaccinated. We are going to continue to do what is necessary by giving Canadians the information, by making it easy to get vaccinated. The head of the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario says she would likely support a government move to make vaccinations mandatory for her members, acknowledging there are still some vaccine-hesitant or even anti-vaxxer nurses. We're talking about a insidious mutating virus. So these folks who are concerned about mandatory vaccines have nothing to be concerned about and there will be no vaccine passports. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.